Hey, what's up everyone? On today's episode of Roscoe's Reef, well, it's happened again. Another colony of zoas has contracted some kind of fungal infection and we're going to try a different approach in curing them. So let's get to it. Here's exactly what happened this morning when I woke up. Um, these were, these are Sunny D's. And they have the same brown uh, stuff on them that the Utter Chaos had. And it was on the last video that one of, uh, one of you actually left this comment on my video. So now if it is brown fungus, which I'm assuming it is because it's, it's shaping up the same way, it's getting this brown gook at the end of the each polyp, I am going to do a hydrogen peroxide dip. And I'm going to link the article in the description below on Reef to Reef where it'll take you through the steps on how actually to do this. Now, as you can see, uh, none of the other Zoas or Pallies in the garden are getting it. Um, in fact, even the Worldwide Coral Pallies, I just noticed that there is a, another head right behind there um, you can see it actually better in that picture so let's go over to the table now and I'll show you exactly um, the supplies I use I'm going to use to dip these so here are the supplies that you need to do this with what I have here are four jars and if you've purchased a coral from Coral Lust the larger corals will come in these containers so they're perfect to hold on to and use for dipping small corals and uh, that's basically what I use them for you also need provodone iodine and also hydrogen peroxide you're going to also need they say a soft um, arts and crafts paintbrush or a makeup brush um, what I use is this is a very very soft toothbrush as you can see it's a kid's toothbrush so uh, it's very soft I lightly go over the tips of the Zoas with these a turkey baster of course for blowing on corals towel pair of gloves some dollar store crazy glue this is the gel kind and also frag plugs because uh, while they are healing I put them in my frag tank and uh, we'll take a look at that later on so now let's get on with the process of taking care of this dip okay so now I'm going to uh, I've retrieved the coral from the tank and I also have a pipette from that I use also to drop each individual drop of hydrogen peroxide in the tank. Now what it's recommended is to keep dropping until you see bubbles form at the base of the coral. So we'll do that first. Okay, so now you can see, not so much at the base of the coral, but on the polyp itself. I'm going to come in here, right here, and 
right here I'm seeing bubbles so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more in. I don't want to overdo this because obviously the aim is to treat this and not kill it. I have done this on the other colony of Utter Chaos and I'll have something to report for that in a minute. Okay, so now I'm seeing more bubbles forming right in here so now what it says to do is to let this sit in this uh, bath for about five minutes and you see some pods starting to release and come off of the coral so now you definitely see more in the way of bubbling right in here in this area so I think at this point I'm just going to let this work and uh, we'll be back in about five minutes. So now five minutes has passed and you can see the result of it. There's all kinds of bubbles um, working in here. I'm gonna gently blow this now and kind of a little hard and interesting trying to do this through the phone. Now all the the material I've read on this does say it basically looks the same with the corals having black tips. I want to make sure I stay far enough away from the coral so that I'm not sucking the heads in. Now what I'm going to do also is come in here with the brush and very very gently I'm going to brush each head very lightly. Just brush each head very lightly. Okay. So now that each head has been brushed lightly, it's time to prepare the bath for the iodine mix. So the iodine mix is going to be in here and now what the article states is as far as iodine is concerned it's used primarily for um, LPS and zoas and soft corals. It's not recommended for SPS and when you're dealing especially with zoanthids, uh, the writer basically stated that the darker is the better. Now again, since I'm not too, um, I'm not going to be making it as dark as he made it. He basically made his so dark that you couldn't see the coral. I am going to make it a little darker than this. Okay, give it a quick stir. So basically it's, it's looking like a tea color. Okay, so now I'm going to take the coral now out of the hydrogen peroxide dip and I'm going to put it into the iodine dip. So now the, the coral has been placed in the iodine bath, I'm going to release the tweezers and let it sit there. Now the article that was written um, on this method, basically what the writer does is he uses this and he makes his bath the color of basically coffee so you can't see it. He then uses a larger tub, puts a heater in it and leaves the coral in the bath for 24 hours. What he states is it removes any bacterial uh, infection or fungal infection and also any parasites that may be on the coral um, while also uh, the coral uses it as 
for what he says, lack of a better term, a vitamin boost. The coral tends to take in the um, iodine as a supplementation of sorts. I am not leaving it in for 24 hours. What I'm, what I'm going to do in this case, because this is water fresh from the tank, I'm going to leave it um, in this bath for about 10 minutes, maybe 15. Uh, my house's room temperature is warm enough that it should not harm them at all. So when it's done with the bath, well, come right back. Okay, so now the, the zoanthids have finished their 15 minute dip in the iodine. So now what I'm doing now is I'm transferring them over to just regular water and I'm gently waving them around to give them a little swish in clean water. And from here I'm transferring them to another clean water dip. And here I will just gently blow current on them. make sure everything's off now the next step is transferring them to the tank and uh, I've set up a frag rack in the tank to rest them on so here are the um, corals after the dip I placed them on a frag rack in my tank and I'm going to be watching them carefully over the next week or so to see if there's any change in them now I did the same thing with the other chaos and here are the results of that. You can see all the heads are withdrawn, but there are two polyps. If I can get them in frame, there's two right here. And there's also another one in this area that do open up. I'm also watching this because there may be a chance that some of the other chaos have made it. And if that's the case, then I'll frag them off the main rock and uh, rebuild the colony. So, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Uh, like I said, uh, this is just what I do. Uh, I'm fairly new at it, uh, having researched it basically within the last two days. So this is kind of an experiment and process, and I hope you follow along with it to see what the results are. So, until next time... This is Scott, and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.